What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and in this video, as promised, I will be comparing the iPod Touch 6th generation to the iPod Touch 5th generation. Apple's been taking it slow. It's been three years since the refresh of the iPod Touch, and now that we've got it in hand, I want to compare everything from features to specs to day-to-day -day usage and let you guys know, is this a device worth paying $200 for, and does it warrant an upgrade from an older device? Now, taking a quick look at it, it seems as if Apple just shrugged this one off. You know, just change some internals, and that'll be good enough sell that to them. I mean, on the outside, it's the same device. It looks nearly identical to the fifth generation. It comes in three snazzy new colors, a hot pink, a blue, and a gold color. And it does add a very nice look to it. However, everything that's changed with this thing is on the inside. And that's not a bad thing. So Apple's replacing three older colors with the three newer colors. The new blue replaces this old turquoise. The gold replaces the lime. And the new hot pink replaces the old salmon color. Now, Apple has also done away with that rear wrist strap attachment feature. Liked by some, disliked by many, Apple has finally gotten rid of it for good. But aside from this, there is no physical difference between the iPod Touch 5th generation and iPod Touch 6th generation. The ports are all in the exact same location, the camera still protrudes, so it's familiar. It's the exact same shell, just different internals pretty much. Now this latest iPod Touch is packing some heat. It's got Apple's latest A8 chip used in the production of the iPhone 6. It's slightly underclocked to 1.1 gigahertz, so there's a little bit of a difference there, and a dual core. 64-bit chip with a gig of RAM, also the M8 motion coprocessor for health and fitness tracking. Interestingly enough, the battery capacity did increase by 13 milliamps, so that's surprising, but probably to accommodate that slightly smaller motherboard. Now, there's no word on whether or not this will increase battery life, but it will stay the same as the 5th gen. Now, before I even get into the testing, just using this thing, I notice a massive difference in terms of loading, closing applications, the animations are a lot smoother, a lot more fluid than that on the iPod Touch 5th generation. Now, Largely, this is because of that much faster processor, and when we get into the actual score on the Geekbench, oh man, there is quite a difference. But just launching applications, closing them, everything is so much better on the sixth generation. And just wanted to show you sub menus, especially in the settings. Just look at this. There is such a gap delay in between loading stuff between the fifth and sixth gen. So with everything closed out, I'm going to go ahead and run a Geekbench on both of these devices just to show you guys how much of a difference there is when you skip a generation of an iPod Touch. So here it is. It's a five to six times difference between the iPod Touch fifth generation and the sixth generation in the Geekbench score. I mean, that really does translate everything from gaming to day-to-day -day usage. You will notice that. Even loading those submenus, did you see that delay? So there is a massive difference here, no question. Now, the new iPod Touch also has the new 802.11 AC Wi-Fi standard. It only makes a difference if you have a compatible router, which I have an Apple router, and I'm going to go ahead and show you the speed results for the Wi-Fi. Now, second time around running these tests, I noticed that there isn't such a massive difference. The iPod Touch 5th generation still does a good job, but in terms of a Wi-Fi range, the iPod Touch 6th generation will be able to pick it up more and almost twice as fast. So Bluetooth has also been upgraded. It's now 4.1, which is a better, more reliable connection. And that leaves us with the camera. It's now an 8 megapixel sensor up from 5 on the 5th gen, and it's capable of 120 frames per second slow motion. Now, the front-facing camera has received some upgrades as well, although very, very minor. Restructured pixels, so you're going to get slightly better performance in low light. Other than that, it's the same 1.2 megapixel count. Now, here's just a test sample of the video quality. Now, in this shot in particular, the iPod Touch 5th generation had better color reproduction than the 6th. However, the focus is better on the 6th generation. It's more accurate. It's a little bit faster, especially the continuous autofocus. And in some situations, the color reproduction was the same. So I'm a little bit disappointed with that, but otherwise, you know, great quality, great focus. All right, so that's just about it, guys. The iPod Touch 6th generation brings a lot to the table for $200. Now, it's definitely a device worth getting. I mean, you could throw it around, put it in a gym bag, go to the gym, just carry it around for music. You know, it's a great device, and it's not for everybody, but for the people that need it, it's a good one. Now, whether or not it warrants an upgrade from a 5th gen, I don't know about that. It does have a lot for it, but there really is no new feature that's a compelling buy if you have an older one besides the speed. And there you go. So thanks for watching guys i hope this video gave you a good reason to buy or not to buy the ipod touch 6th generation and in all honesty it is a great device it's just not for everybody but i'm glad apple is keeping this guy in their lineup it's basically an iphone 5s without the phone part with the speed of the iphone 6 so thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't already throw me a like if you like this video and enjoy your ipod touch 6th generation if you do choose to buy one it's a great device peace